Hi, so my name is Natalie and I'm a software engineer at QSpark. <laughs> what? <laughs> so anyway, um, QSpark does infrastructure for high frequency trading, pretty much everything except for the actual trading algorithms. And that means we have some really strict latency requirements for our hot path, right? Um, so this is a talk about how I wasted an afternoon panicking about things, benchmarking stuff, uh, that everything was fine in the end, but hopefully I also learned something. Um, by the way, this is mostly Linux and Intel specific, but it can be relevant for others as well. So, how did it all begin? Well, we do take a few timestamps in our hot path, you know, and one day I just noticed um, how we actually take these time stems. Look here, um, clock get time is a system call. Now, conventional wisdom says um, system calls can take a very, very long time, you know, go down to the kernel, whatnot. Um, as far as uh, HFT hot path goes, that's pretty much forever. And so I'm looking at that and thinking, what the hell? But as we C++ developers know, when in doubt, benchmark, right? So. I hoped on to um, quickbench.com, wonderful site, by the way. Uh, so in blue here, you see me benchmarking clock get time and comparing it to an alternative in yellow. Um, there I am using the timestamp counter, which is not relevant to most people, uh, and is also Intel only, since uh, the output it gives is only comparable inside the same CPU, but that's exactly what we're doing in our hot path anyway, so for us it could be relevant. Now, I do make a little sin here, but by um, assuming I know the CPU's T TSCT correct ahead of time, but it is constant on processors like ours. So it should be close to reality anyway. So let's see the results. Well, let's just say that the first time I saw this, as in clock get time taking, being 85 times slower than RDTSC, I was like, what? What the hell? Are we actually latency critical? Are we really real time? Are we actually losing tons of money and somehow not noticing? Like what? But then I remembered, you know, these are benchmarks run on quickbench.com, not on our servers. So how about I take this code, compile it, and run it on one of our servers instead? Which is what I did. And look here. Um, this is quite the difference. You can see that clock get time is only two times slower than RDTSC instead of 85 times slower. What, what the hell? What? That's not comparable in any way whatsoever. Now, um, as a talk by Chandler Kiruth taught me, um, very often when we benchmark something, um, we're not benchmarking what we think we're benchmarking. Um, and so I profiled my benchmarks in perf to see which instructions actually get run. Well then, um, as you can see here, uh, these are the instructions for clock get time. Uh, you can see we do have um, a syscall instruction in the end, but we seems like we have never called it. Um, so we were in user space the whole time. Uh, as you can see, also confirmed by strace. So what actually happened? Well, it looks like uh, our sister, our, the clock our OS on our servers is using is TSC, you know, the timestamp counter. So uh, behind the scenes, clock get time just calls RDTSC the same way that we do, exactly the same thing. But then why is it still slower than uh, my shitty TSC wrapper? Well then, uh, as we saw in the previous slide, there are still quite a few more instructions, function calls, so I guess that would make the difference. And also maybe they still uh, measure the CPU frequency even though it is constant. But well, at least uh, in the end turned out everything is fine, at least if we consider 15 nanoseconds per timestamp to be fine. And uh, I guess lesson learned that at least I wrote a good benchmark. Well, that's all, folks. <laughs>